Can we give a round of applause to Sister Judith, please? Take your place, Lord, and have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. When you're done, please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. Pray the Holy Spirit will help us. Um, I know the theme for the Love God Worship Night is the Promise Keeper. And as I prayed about it when I was contacted last Saturday, 
I just felt the leading of the Lord to still share on that. And um, it's obvious that we all fight discouragement and situations, over situations and circumstances daily. And this could be due to decisions we all make as young people. And um, it could also be because of our personalities. Um, sometimes we might have the feeling of being stuck or not being able to achieve things like we want to, or we have this negativity spiral all around our lives. And you begin to wonder, how can I ever get over this? How will a change happen? You feel powerless sometimes, but I would like to introduce to you today the promise keeper. He's the solution. He's the one that can give all solutions. And by the theme, we, we I would like to tell us, um, I know some of us might be familiar with the definition of a promise, but I have written here that a promise is a declaration or assurance that one will do something or that a particular thing will happen. It's a declaration, it's an assurance given to each and every one of us. And when we talk about keeper in this contest, what we are saying here is someone who stands by what he or she says. And um, we are here to, serve, to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and to say a big thank you to him. So when we talk about the promise keeper, who then are we talking about? We're talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the God Almighty, the one who sent the Lord Jesus to come and die for you and I. And when we go through all the 66 books of the Bible, we'll find out it's all full of promises. And are we manifesting in these promises? Are we taking advantage of this? Another question I want to ask us is, why do I have to believe in these promises? Yes, because I hear the Bible says this, oh, I can do all things I can do. Why do I have to believe? When we go into the book of Psalms, chapter 138, verse 2b, it reads there, for thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. We are talking about a God who honors every word that he says. And I'm sure I can say we might have a few of us who can attest to this, that God indeed has been faithful in our lives. Um, when we go through that same verse, that's Psalm um, 138 verse 2 be in the contemporary English version. It says, you were true to your word and made yourself more famous than ever before. He is actually true his word. He was, he is, and he remains ever the same. Why do I have to believe God's promises? In Psalm 89 verse 34, in the New Living Translation version, it says, no, I will not back I will not break my covenant. I will not take back a single word I have said. And you know, when we talk about the word of God, it's very important we cherish it because the earth we're living in today was actually created by his spoken word. If we go back to the book of Genesis, we hear and we read, I said, he said, let there be, he said, let there be. So therefore, if that's it, then this word is actually the spoken word of God and it gives us every reason to believe because as he said then, it came to pass and as he continues to say, we see it coming to pass. And based on my little walk with the Lord Jesus, having access to the full exposition of his character of truth, his acts and love of mercy by reading and studying of the word, I can affirm that indeed he is a promise keeper. And I believe as we go on today, we will be able to satisfy every one of us and ensure that we all know that we are not serving a vain God. We are serving a powerful God. A God that makes a way where there seems to be no way. He says, if frustrates the token of liars, he runs the viners mad. He says, when you need me, call upon me. As long as you believe, whatever you ask him, he will give to us. And as I go on in this short message, it's I, I, um, according to the stages of life, because I know the, um, the people we are all here in with, we are all young people here. I hope I'm young enough. <laughs> we are all young here. But you know, as we all go on in life, there are several questions flying into our minds. And um, I just want to list four important ones that I think we always think will need answers. One of the questions is, is a question on identity. Who am I? Another one is on relationship. How do I get along with others? Another question is about your future. Where will I fit? The fourth one here is the question on ideology. What do I believe? 
And we know that as we go through this, definitely because we are still passing through life, it will bring, a, it will bring about a lot of thoughts, a lot of feelings, a lot of behavior in attending to many of these questions, particularly these four questions. And my work all the years that I started my profession with young people, I can see that most of the reasons why we young people go through a lot it ties around most of these questions. And today we are seeing young people say they are depressed. And you begin to wonder, how can you say you're depressed? But it's important to, tell, to let you know that depression can come through learned helplessness. It's so easy to get depressed when you feel or when you learn that your actions are futile as a matter of how hard you work. So you're working too hard and you're not seeing the results like you want. Definitely it will cause depression. It could also be because you're trying to please your parents, you're doing all you can, and they still don't understand you because some of our parents need to be equipped on how to manage young people as we all grow. And it could be you've set yourself some goals and you've been unable to achieve them. This could also lead to depression. Depression can also be caused by cognitive reasons, how you think particularly on circumstances around you. It could be because of things that had happened in your life in the past or what you're going through at the moment. But you know, because we're talking about a promise keeper, how then will you be able to counter all of this? The Bible says in the book of Psalm 9 verse 9, the Lord is a shelter for the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble. And uh, another scripture says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But you begin to wonder, yes, I read this in the Bible, or maybe I go to church, I'm hearing it for the first time, perhaps. The only thing you need to do is just read and believe it and own it to yourself. And know that if he says it, if he says it, he's able to do it. Because you have evidence about it. You wake up in the morning, you didn't wake up by your own strength or your own power. He actually gave us the grace to wake up. And we also have several other things that we all go through. Some of it could be self-confidence. Some of us do have low self-confidence. And what did the Bible say about this? In Psalm 139 verse 13 to 14, I just paraphrase. It says, you are fearfully made and wonderfully made. Therefore, if anyone comes across to say anything less of what the Bible has said about you. It is right time for you to hold on to that promise and say, you know what, I am fearfully made. I am wonderfully made of God. Don't let anyone give you an identity you don't want. And before I go ahead with that, with, um, to the next point, it's also important for every one of us to know it is the identity you birth and give yourself that will command the respect of other people. If you look less of yourself, then don't be surprised or intimidated when other people look down on you. So what I'm trying to do here is to stir you up and begin to believe what the scripture says about you. You are the child of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the great I am that I am, and you ought to walk so. Anything short of that, know that you're compromising your faith in the Lord. Also, we have fear and discouragement in the lives of young people today. And what does the Bible promise about that? Isaiah 41 verse 10 in the New Living Translation. It says, fear not, do not be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Those are the promises. But um, even as I go on anxiety, we also have some. But I want to encourage us, for as many of us that are not used to reading the Bible, let it be something new we want to start. Let it be a decision we are making today. Because you're telling me I know God, but the only way you can accurately know God and walk in the power and authority he has given to you is by going through his word. We have over a thousand, many religions in the world today, and they all have a written book that guides their religion. For us, Christianity, we don't want to believe it's a religion. It's a way of life. It's being Christ-like. It's living a righteous life and living Christ-like in all that we do. However, based on all these promises, how can you be a full beneficiary of it? Because I know right here, for as many of us that are seated here, it might be like I've been struggling, I've been thinking about it, nothing is actually happening, there is no shift, there is no move. But you know what? To be a beneficiary, the first thing you've got to do is to be born again. You've got to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because if you say you want something from your dad and you don't please your father or your mother, 
definitely it might be a bit of a daunting task to get it from him. But if you accept him as your Lord and Savior today, you will surely find that some of those things will happen. But that is not a guarantee that there won't be challenges. Of course there will be challenges. We've got an evidence with us in this room today. My granddaughter is here. And you know, when she was born, she was born completely speechless, dead, every, let's use the word dead. And it took 19 minutes for her to be resuscitated. And even after that, they had to wait for four hours to actually prove that she can still make it. And what happened? When that happened, I received a call from my son. I said, what's going on here? I called my pastor, no response. I called another pastor friend, no response. I stood in my bedroom that night and I said, God, what are you up to? And I remember the promise. He says, he's the breath of life. That's why it's important for us to know. You might not know exactly where it is in the Bible, but you know this is the written word of God. Because even when Jesus was being challenged by Satan, he did not quote where it was coming from, but he said, it is written. And as soon as I heard that, I said, okay, Lord, I know you're going to do it. And the Lord did an exemplary miracle. After about two hours into that, I was still looking and I was wondering, how am I going to go about this? I now had a thought to call one of my prayer partners then, and that's um, Tolu's mom. I don't know where Tolu is, but that's Tolu's mom. And that was around two, 11 at night because I just, I knew I had had God, but I still wanted at least someone to be with me. And why I'm sharing that part of it is, let your relationships be strategic. Don't just allow anyone into your life. You're too, you're too costly for you to allow anyone just mess your life up or mingle with your heart or the way you think. Guard your heart jealously because that from there comes the issues of life and that's what the Bible says. So what I'm also saying to us here is, okay, let me just quickly round up that story. So at the end of it, we prayed together that night, the following morning, she was on sedation for nine good days. I'm sharing that with you because some of us sometimes don't believe in miracles. Well, that's a miracle in the room here with us. The two, they, she was taken to the specialist hospital that very night around 2 a.m. And they did say massive brain damage. Nothing can be done. Well, called my son several times, just signed that she would, when we take off the ventilator and she goes, that's it. And I said, no, you must not sign it. And he thought I was crazy. He thought I was mad. But because I had heard the word of God and I believed it, which is what I'm sharing with you today, that hear the word of God, know it, believe every promise he has for you, and run with it. And this very consultant said, in my 25 years of practice, I've never seen a child survive this. 19 minutes, no oxygen, completely dead. She, even if she survives it, she's going to be worse than an imbecile. And I refused and I rejected it outrightly. And you know, we continued to battle for 13 days. On the ninth day, she started to move just her toe. And they did, they, the consultant continued with her story. And I said, we overrule that in the name of Jesus. But today, what are we saying? A child that is going to be about three years old, praising the Lord and doing marvelous things. I'm sharing that testimony to ensure that you all actually believe God. Give your life to him. He never fails and he will never fail you. The life we live today is all about choices. You are what you are today because of the choices you made yesterday. And how can you get right and informed choices that can lead your life and help you fulfill destiny in Christ? It is only through your maker, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is the time for you. Use this opportunity. You might say, oh, tomorrow. No, tomorrow might not be there. As we are in this room, the Bible makes us understand Jesus will come in like a thief. If he comes right now, check yourself. Do you think you're going to be raptured? Are you going to be going with him? If you know you're not in that position, when we make the altar call later on as the program goes on, I will encourage us and plead with us. Let's give our lives to Christ. Let's leave this Christ for the Lord Jesus. And you will begin to see dramatic changes taking place. Don't depend on alcohol. Don't depend on drugs. That can only go for a measure of time. Once it wears away, you come back to your normal being and you begin to face the same challenges. So as many of us that are not saved today, Let's give our lives to Christ. And for those that are saved already, 
and you still think I'm one leg in, one leg out. It doesn't work out easy for such people because you cannot be part of the kingdom of God and be part of the kingdom of darkness. You've got to choose where you want to stay. So you can, decide, you can decide this night to say, you know what, I'm going to rededicate my life to Christ. I'm going to follow him all through. And believe you me, this promise keeper we're talking about today, he never fails. He keeps his promises. And like we all know, the world we are in today is full of a lot of challenges. Challenges that you don't even know where to turn to sometimes. You see people manifesting and say, not even manifesting, but saying to you, I am a witch. I've been in, a, in my sessions with a seven-year-old child, and she did say to me, I am a witch. And she was expressing everything they do right here in Scotland. When that happened, I, I called my pastor to say, oh, this is, I wanted to run away. But you know, when I was praying about it, the Lord said to me, I died for her. So if God can say, I died for a witch, then I want to let you know, no matter how deep you are in sin, Jesus is calling you today. And I pray you take heed and answer to the call in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless this word in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Let's just say a short prayer before we go on. Thank you. I will encourage us, even if you don't want to come out, just raise your hands. And you know, when you raise your hands, what you're saying to the Lord is, here I am, oh God, accept me back. And you're also saying to the devil, I am no longer yours. Pornography, I am no longer yours. Sexual saints, I am no longer yours. Alcohol, I don't belong to you anymore. I belong to the Lord Jesus. So for as many of us that are also not only deep in sin, but you go to church, but you know you don't have a relationship with this God. You might be spiritually sound. I mean, you might be sound when it comes to your moral behaviors, the way you think, you try to be as good as you can. But you know what the Bible says about that is all self-righteousness. And the Bible says that's just like filthy rags before God. Our righteousness ought to be in the Lord Jesus Christ. So as many that want to give their lives to the Lord today, you are welcomed into the fold. And you know what the Bible says about that? That there is joy in heaven over just one soul. So if you know today is your own day, we never can say when Jesus will come. Tomorrow might be too late. These days we see what the devil is doing with the young ones. And I say to in the name of Jesus, none of us will be cut short in Jesus' name. Let us all pray. Father, we just want to say thank you. We thank you because we do not have the power to change anyone, but you do have the power. Lord, these ones have surrendered themselves to you. They have decided to invite you as their Lord and Savior. Some are rededicating their lives to you, Lord Jesus, my God and my Father. We ask that you please accept them, O oh God. Let them join that great fold of those whose names are written in the book of life. And Lord, even as they have made this decision today, we ask in your mercy, and in your grace and in your might that they will never go back in the name of Jesus. They will not go back to what they used to be. Alcohol and drugs will no longer be their lifestyle. Anger will no longer take hold of their lives. Anxiety will no longer have any stronghold in them anymore. Depression is being released out of their lives completely and the name of God begins to get glorified in them. Lord Almighty, we thank you. We give you all the praise. May they remain rooted and established in you. Thank you, Most High God, for the salvation of their souls. We bless and glorify you. In Jesus' name we have prayed.